literally go step by step and create my own registration, which is what you guys have to do for this coming Sunday. What I would like to do for tonight is show you guys how to debug. Okay, and there's two ways of debugging. There's the old school way, which is putting a whole bunch of printouts everywhere and then going out and looking in the logs. <laughs> or there is the step-by-step <coughs> -step debugging where you can actually see all the status of the variables and and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. You guys should already have covered the basics in PHP and also how I did my registration. Now, this is what I want you to do if you want to develop in Eclipse. Okay, and this is the same Eclipse that we downloaded right and that we um and that we uh set up for PHP remember for PHP development and this is where i have my timex html timex html is my eighth week version of my timex website okay so it's basically all the html pages just snapshot 10 of them Okay, each one depicting a unique functional requirement. Okay, <clears throat> I have also shown you guys how to run that project in your Apache server, right? So, Oh, okay, I know why. Okay, 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 okay. So what we need to do now is take that Timex HTML and deploy it into our w into our www. You guys remember that, right? So what is my Eclipse workspace? My Eclipse workspace, now I'm going to be transferring my static HTML website into a new workspace because it's a workspace that I'm going to be working on for just PHP projects. So I go into my PHP projects and you guys can see in there there's a Timex HTML project. Right? That's the copy from the Timex HTML project that I work under my sites. So I have to take that and copy it and put it into my WAMP www right that's like the yeah like the ht docs equivalent in a regular hp in a regular apache web server so when you do that you can actually take localhost and bang it and here it is so now I can see all my projects under www, of which Timex HTML is one of them. So when I click on Timex HTML, I'm taken to an index HTML or an index PHP, whatever it finds first. What's it going to find? Index HTML, because that's my home page. And if you guys remember, my eight, my, I'm sorry, my ten pages that I submitted on week eight. Actually, you guys have access to this since week seven. Um, it's all static pages that fools you into believing that it's a working website, right? I can actually go into login, type an employee ID, type a password, click on sign in, and I'm taken into timesheet list. That's where I'm supposed to be taken when I log in. And then I go into this pending timesheet. And since it's pending, notice that it sends me into enter hours, which is where I can actually specify the department, put eight hours. There's even, there's even, validation 
okay? Which should be. There should be validation. You guys were supposed to send... I'm sorry. You guys were supposed to validate for every single input from your users and that's including registration and entering whatever main entity you are entering you know validate the data so that you guys will know that you are getting the right data so in this case there's a business rule that says there's no way that an employee can work more than 16 hours a day so I'm not going to allow more than 16 hours for a day okay uh, and then you can save, click on save, you're going back to timesheet list. Now, did this thing happen? Did it actually bump the number of hours or save it in the database? No, because this is all static HTML, right? This is simulation of a look and feel of a website. In fact, when you guys work in the real world on website projects you will be asked to create a prototype and this is what a prototype will look like a prototype will have the look and feel but nothing will be connected behind it it's just so that the stakeholders and the users of these websites will take a look at what the website is going to look like and you can actually click also on an, um, a timesheet that has been uh, approved okay and in that case you shouldn't be able to modify it because it's approved so you are sent to the print hours HTML page this is the one that it's read-only version of the timesheet okay and you should also be able to register and again there should be some kind of validation and validation in should include making sure that password and re-enter password agree if I put in one two three four and then one two three four five okay and I have to fill out the rest of the stuff there's a minimum of stuff that I have to put in there in order for register button to show up as enabled there it is when I click search it should validate the stuff that I input right including that password and re-enter password must be the same so you register and there you go you're sent to login that's where you are supposed to be sent once you register once you register, you're supposed to be sent to login so that you can actually use your... We're not going to do email verification and all that other stuff. And that's just too much for now. Um, but that's the idea. It's all JavaScript menus. I can create a new timesheet. I can see my timesheet list. I can take a look at paid timesheet. This is what a paid check report looks like for a specific timesheet. Okay, that's all based on a regular pay, some taxes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I can take a look at the timesheets that have been approved. And if I'm a manager, I should actually be able to see all my employees' timesheets and be able to say yes, I approve, or no, I don't approve. You should be able to go ahead and look at look at it before you approve it okay these are all different functional requirements implemented this one obviously is called approved timesheets there's also reports this is the staff report which it will tell you if you're a manager who are your employees and what are the hours that they are being charged so far this year or so far you can limit whatever the summer report will give you a summary of all the hours being um, submitted this week by everybody in the company okay and the one time sheet report which you are already you are already familiar with okay so pretty much what is it static HTML with menus working 
you know, it can take you anywhere you want. It gives you a simulation of this stuff. Now it's time to make it real. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to implement registering. In fact, that's something that I did already in a video lecture, and that's the video lecture that I share with you guys. I show you how I implemented this registration and how I did server-side validation of the data and how I save the data that is being input in here into the database and how I show error messages in case there's something missing or not input correctly. Okay, So I suggest that you please watch that video lecture so you can actually see what's going on. Tonight, I'm going to actually go through that code that I created and I'm going to debug it step by step. Debugging is going to be one of the most important tools that you have available when you run into problems with your code and you cannot figure out what on earth is wrong with the code. Okay? So, that's one of the things that I want to do tonight. I also want to be able to tell you how to do the jump from Timex HTML into Timex PHP, which is the PHP version of it. Okay? Is that something that I uh, I forgot? I omitted in the, in the in the in the previous video lecture. So I'm going to show you guys. Are there any questions? All right. So since this is the Timex HTML, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. And this time it's not going to be a static website project. It's going to be a PHP project. Okay? And we're going to call it Timex PHP. Okay? And we're going to leave all this stuff default. This is what you should get. Uh, this is a brand new PHP project. You should get JavaScript resources because PHP assumes that you're going to be using JavaScript on the front end. It uses the PHP include path which means everything that you put inside here that's going to be part of your project. Okay, And you're also going to have the PHP language library. This is the core API for PHP. Okay. which is pretty cool because you can actually have IntelliSense available and you can have the names of all the functions, everything, absolutely everything in your PHP li library. So far so good? Now, we are going to start from our static HTML and convert on a one or two page rate per week. So these ten pages that you guys have shared, or five pages that you guys have shared with me, but I'm sharing ten with you, um, will be converted into PHP pages. Okay? So what I want you to do is, for now, take those ten pages and copy them. into your PHP. All right? There it is. So right now you have exactly the same static website that you had before. Also, take the images, the JavaScript, and the styles folder and copy them. And now, the first functional requirement that we're going to implement in PHP is going to be registration. So take the registration HTML and rename it. Uh, refactor, rename, as registration PHP. Got it? 
Now you have a PHP project that will work under the HTTP server at local host and be able to debug it. Now how much PHP code do we have in here? None. Okay? And don't get any ideas, okay? Because I've had students from previous semesters that all they did was rename the HTMLs and PHP and that's what they submitted. Not a good idea. The way that I'm going to be grading your stuff actually is going to be I'm going to be adding stuff to your database and then I run your website. I should be able to see the stuff that I added to your database in your website, obviously. Okay? So <clears throat> the next step will be actually watch video lecture, the previous one, and come up with. the registration PHP working which is what I did so at the end you have this PHP okay this is registration PHP working and like I said I go step by step on the first video lecture on how I created this so now we're ready to run it so we're going to run it so we're going to indicate the run configuration. Actually, what we want to do is we want to debug it, right? Let's debug it. So we're going to debug it, and we're going to have a debug configuration. And you can create a brand new one if you want. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a brand new PHP website. So I press on the new button and I'm going to call it the registration PHP configuration okay and we're going to use the xdebug server debugger okay there's two options under Eclipse you can use the xdebug or the zen debugger if you have a zen web server then the best one to use is the zen debugger but we don't have that we have a WAMP which is um, which is the one that uses xdebug by default. Now on your WAMP, if you go into your Apache, I'm sorry, not your Apache, your PHP settings, make sure that you have that xdebug remote debug on. If you don't, it won't work. Okay. So make sure you have that remote debug. That's the X debug that the PHP under the WAMP, running under the WAMP, will use. Once you enable that, then you indicate what's going to be your PHP server. Obviously, it's going to be this guy, right? The HTTP server that if you go into configuration, you will see it's your local host. It's already running. It's your WAMP server. We call it the default PHP web server. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then in here we indicate what page in that project we're going to be start debugging on. So under Timex PHP, the only PHP page that we have that makes sense to debug is registration. So that's the one that we're going to be using. Make sure that you say break at first line, so as soon as it sees the first PHP statement, it stops right there. Okay? And the URL, it will be automatically generated. This is our server, which we all know it's HTTP localhost. This is the and then this is the rest of the URL, which is the name of the project and the page. You apply. So you have created your registration PHP configuration. Next time, all you have to do is run that. And then you hit debug. And here we are. Debug session ended. Okay. So here we are. 
the first time that you do this it will say wait a minute you want to debug do you want me to switch to the debug perspective the PHP debug perspective I was in the PHP perspective I say yes and remember my settings that's why it didn't ask me a second time so it will automatically switch me to the PHP debug perspective this perspective is set up in a way that I can see my code, I can see my stack trace. The stack trace is actually the call to the different functions that I will be calling and to the different uh, pages that I'll be calling in my code. Also a window where I can see the values of all my variables and a browser where I can see how far I have gotten into my debugging session. Okay. So right now, it shows me on my stack trace that I have stopped in Timex PHP project registration PHP document under line 2. And it will show me in the code with green background where am I. Okay, Page title, registration. These are all my variables. In fact, this is something that I cover in the first video lecture. Anything that starts with dollar sign underscore, that's a system variable that's automatically created by PHP and Apache for you. Okay? And also, these are my local variables which have been uninitialized. Okay? So the debugger actually went through my entire registration PHP code and figure out all the variables that I'm going to be using. And here they are. Okay? So the first one that I'm going to be initializing will be page title. This is how you move. You can step over or you can step into. Typically you will step over unless you want to go into a deeper debugging session of a function or whatnot. In this case, since it's just a simple debugging session. So I'm going to execute I'm going to step over the first statement and as soon as I do that notice that page title now has a value and I can click on it and it will show me the value okay then I'm about to include the header so I step over now so far the browser notice that it's still spinning so it hasn't really received a response why because my server is still working on it and I'm debugging it so it's gonna it's gonna be a while sometimes you will find that your debugging is so time-consuming that it will time out for the browser so I'm gonna show you in a minute how you can increase the amount of time of the timeout so you guys don't don't time out so so early or so soon then we're going to do the include of the menus that's the next step all right then we're going to ask whether the register has been posted or not okay so remember you guys have a dollar sign underscore post array right available and can you tell me how many members in the array are they none which means nothing has been posted yet right so what do you think is going to come up here is set it's not going to be set so it's not going to go into the if statement so it's going to jump all that stuff and then it's going to go right into my form Okay. there's a little bit of PHP code in there, it doesn't really matter then it's going to include the sidebar, sidebar registration and the footer and that's it at this point the browser output, this is the browser output this is what the actual PHP sent 
back. Okay. This is the PHP result. Okay. And in the browser, this is what I'm getting. Why is it so much nicer in the browser? Yes, because in the browser it knows about JavaScript, it knows about the cascading style sheet, it knows about the images, which the server doesn't even care. Okay. So the first time that you hit registration, since nothing has been posted, all it's going to do is show you the empty form. All right, so now it's time. to put some real data. Now we click register. Remember, we still have our debugger set that when it hits register PHP, the first line of code, it will stop right there. And there it is. So we're back to basics. Page title, nothing. Okay. Why is page title nothing if we already had initialized as registration? Can you guys tell me why? You guys remember that we set page title to registration? Why is it showing up as an initialize now? You guys ever heard the term that websites are stateless? Websites do not know one guy from another. You ask something from the web server, here it is. I don't know who you are, doesn't really care. The only way that you can keep track of who you are in the web server is if you exchange some kind of data, of information, back and forth. Hey, I'm here. You remember me? Oh yes, I remember you. Take and make sure you tell me next time who you are, because otherwise I'm not going to know who you are. Okay? That's what happened here. The first time that I put, that I hit registration PHP, it filled out all this information, like nothing, like it was the first time. Guess what? This time it did the same thing. Because it doesn't know one user from the next. Websites are stateless by default. And that's why they're so efficient because they do not have to keep track of who has connected at what time and in what status and in what state and all that stuff. Okay? That's the idea. Now, sometimes we need to keep track of the session, and we're going to be doing that next week. Next week, I'm going to show you guys how to do login. When you successfully log in into a website, you have to keep track of this person because this person has already authenticated to you in the web server. So you have to know who he or she is. Okay? And that's managed through the session. <coughs> but we're not going to worry about that right now. So we're going to go through the exact same code all over again. So step over. Now the page title is registration. We're going to include the header. We're going to include the menus. And then we're going to ask the question again. Is post sub register set? What do you guys think? What does post look like now? It's got 12 elements. This array got 12 elements. In, got, in fact, it's got every single piece of data that we posted. You guys see this? You can actually see my password. 
username, full name. Now, where are all these names coming from? From the ID of the input tag that was part of the form that got posted. These are the ID. Keep that in mind because that's going to be key. When you create your HTML pages, actually PHP pages, the names that will get posted are the IDs of the HTML tags. And these are the values. So dollar sign underscore post is an array of hashes. You ask for username as the key, you're giving the value of the username. You ask for the employee type as a key, you're giving the value. Okay? And that's exactly what goes here. Dollar sign underscore post sub register is actually asking for this guy. Now can you tell me where in my form I have that input tag? Do I have an input tag called register? Where? The button. Exactly. The button is an input tag. Okay? It's an input tag of type submit. That's the guy that triggers the whole, hey, here it is. I'm sending all this stuff. Okay? And that guy and any other input tag has an ID and a value. So if this is set, which it is, then we're going to go step by step through the registration. Okay? The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say require once my SQL Connect, which is another PHP web um, page that will actually open the connection to our database. So we're going to we can go step into or we can step over. If you say step into, it's going to actually load my SQL Connect PHP and it's going to walk you step by step through each one of these statements in there. Very simple stuff. Like I said, I go through this in the first video lecture. You create all these constants, root, no password, for the database, okay? And then you're going to do a MySQL Connect. If everything goes well, then you're going to get a connection under this variable. Variable. DBC, database connection. Okay? Then, when you continue, you're taken back to the original caller, which is registration PHP. So you guys see the difference between include and require once, right? Include, you're just grabbing a file of HTML that you are not going to interpret. Require once, you're going to grab a file that contains PHP code that you will have to interpret. Then you initialize errors. And then you start asking if, there, if post is empty or if full name is empty or if email is empty. This is all server-side validation. Okay? Just making sure that you're getting all this stuff in the right format and it will be safe for you to save in the database before you save it in the database. <coughs> there is out there on website, and this is probably one of the highest security risks on websites, something called a SQL injection, in which you can actually, instead of putting Alvarez Kubora as a value, you can actually pu put put a SQL statement that will try to get into your database. So when you try saving it, it would actually execute it. And at that point, you can be affecting the database, raising your salary, or giving yourself uh, administrator rights to the server where that thing is running. Not very good. Okay. So before you save this stuff, you got to validate it. So what do we do about it? First thing is we ask if it's empty, which in this case it's not empty, right? We know that post has a username. So what do we do? We tell SQL I to real escape it. This is getting rid of all extraneous SQL injection 
possible values that will mess up your stuff. So first of thing, first you, what you do is you trim it, you take that value and you trim it, and then you tell it to use that connection and do a real escape. That's getting rid of any ext ex uh, uh, strenuous characters and SQL injections. Then you save the value under UN. This is another cool feature of the debugger. You can actually hold over the variable. If you don't want to have to find it in the list of variables, you just hold over it and it will tell you what's the value of the variable. Okay? And then next, you do the same thing for full name and email and password. And then finally, these guys, you don't really do any escape on them. They're um, optional. So we're going to do next, next, next on all of them. I'm sorry, you're not going to validate whether they're empty or not because they're optional. You're going to still do these real escape string on them. And then you're going to come up with all these different values. Okay, so All these variables, as you can see now, they have a value. This is the only one that is in initialized so far. Zip, username, etc., etc. And then you're going to ask whether errors is empty. Now, errors is the array that we initially um, initialized here. We created it here. And if in case we had some of these empty, what we will do is we'll put into the error some kind of message saying, hey, you missed this, or you forgot this or that or the other. Okay. In this case, since we didn't forget anything, error should be empty, which it is. So that means that we can go inside the if, and now we're about to construct our query. Okay. Notice that our dollar sign Q, which is the variable where we're going to store the query, is right now uninitialized. How are we going to do it? It's basically a whole string. This is structure query language. And I go through the in, the in the previous video lecture I go through how to get that structure query language out of your database backup. And I'm going to use as values, I'm going to use the different variables that I have screened and that I have make sure that they're clean each one of these variables plus the ones that are not being asked in the registration like pay rate and tax rate and the registration date those I will have to add in myself now you can add them as their default values and in this case, the registration date will be the timestamp of now. And also, the password will not be saved clear text in the database. It will be saved with the SHA-1. SHA-1 is a function that will actually hash it. It's a one-way hashing function that will encrypt that um, password. Like I said, I go through this on the first video lecture, so if you guys go and watch it, you will be able to see what I'm talking about. And then finally, when I step over, I can actually see the SQL statement that will get executed on the database that would actually create that registration for me. And that's it. And then I tell the MySQL to run the query, and I get ba back R and R will say false, I couldn't do it, or true, yes, I could do it. If it's true, then what are you going to do? You're going to thank me, you're going to say thank you, you're now registered as an employee. Notice that this, all this stuff is HTML. You're producing HTML. Okay? And I'm going to repeat it once again. If you have H1s that belong to a certain class, because that's how your style indicates it should be. You have to be loyal to your style. Don't just put an H1 and all of a sudden you're going to see a nice template and wah, 
this H1 that it's like looking out of place, right? Because it's not going according to your style. So make sure you're faithful to your style, okay? And then that's it. Make sure you close the connection, very important, to your SQL. Then you include your sidebar registration, you include your footer, you exit. You're done. This is the end of the registration. Okay? Thank you. You're now registered as an employee. Are there any questions about debugging your projects? It's a very useful tool. It allows you to walk through your code, view the state of your variables. My suggestion is when you start building your PHP pages, make sure you write three, four lines of code and then test it. Don't run or don't create 30 lines of code and then try testing it because you're going to run into problems and you don't know which of the statements is giving you the problem. The debugger will help. But it's better to be safe and just add little by little the code and then you test it. The more client-side validation you do, the less server-side validation you have to do. For instance, if in the registration I ask for a date of birth or a date, whatever, and you are putting a date picker, which is a JavaScript widget that allows you to actually pop up the calendar, select the date, and it automatically, you do not have to do any validation whatsoever on the server side. Because you know that that date picker took care of making sure that that's a valid date. But if you put instead of a date picker, you put a box, and that's all you're going to put. They can type anything in there. Users can type anything in there, and you're going to have to do validation on the client side or on the server side, and it's going to be a lot more work for you. That's the same case when you know that there's all only a small set of possible values. States, there's only 50 of them, okay? Just provide a drop-down box where they can select the state. They cannot put Florida three different ways. There's only one way to put it, okay? So that's another good tool that you guys can, can use. Make sure that you put your limit, the amount of values that the users can input. Make sure you validate as much as you can on the, f on the client side. And then on the server side, you don't have to do almost nothing. Almost no validation, just the escape. Making sure that nothing is get, gets injected as a SQL inject, and that's it. You guys have got to make sure that you have your menus modified. Otherwise, you're going to turn in a project that has PHP code, but your menus, since they were not changed from h.html to .php, when I click on them, I'm going to see only static code. So you got to make sure that you change your menus. All the links that were .html, now they have to be .php, obviously.